Hello, good day. Uh, it's a busy week and I'm running a little late now. Anyhow, um, this of course is the second Sunday, the Mercy Sunday, sometimes in the old days called Low Sunday. We'll be in with the Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 5, verse 12, verses 12 to 16. Many signs and wonders were done at the hands of the apostles. When Jesus himself walked among the people, he called upon them to believe in him because of the miraculous works he performed. In John chapter 14, verse 11, Jesus said, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. The miraculous works of the apostles were signs that God the Father was at work in them. In John, the second, the third reading, John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, the disciples of Jesus feared the physical violence that the Jewish authorities could inflict on them as they did to Jesus. Jesus assures them, saying, Peace be with you, since he was with them. He sends them forth with the divine power of the Holy Spirit to bring his redemption of sins to those whom they find worthy, or to withhold it from those they find unworthy. Jesus himself will no longer be physically visible here. And so he sends them in his place to accomplish his mission and will in, in this world. Later, Thomas announces that he believes that Jesus' death on the cross was final. It could not possibly be reversed. He was a man firmly grounded in the, common se in the common sense ways of this world. He was not going to be swayed by what seemed to be clearly nonsense. Jesus could have easily said to Matthew, as he did to Peter, in Mark chapter 8, verse, verse 33, You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Jesus showed Thomas physical proof of his resurrection in the nail marks in his body, just as he had demonstrated to the apostles that he was not a ghost or a spirit, but a real physical person when he ate the baked fish. When we see physical material proof, then we have knowledge of that reality. They did not have to believe or have faith in what they did not see with their own eyes. I think that Jesus gave them this physical, visible knowledge of his resurrection so that no one could reasonably claim that Jesus' resurrection was a figment of their imagination and not a genuine reality. And so Jesus says, Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. In 1, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 8a says, Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him. This Sunday's gospel finishes. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The scriptures are given to us as a divine way to come to know that the love with which, Jesus, which with the Father loved Jesus may be in us, and Jesus' his very self may be in us. That's from John chapter 17, verse 26b. The divine revelation that scriptures make, made known, make known to us is not so much words or sentences about Jesus, but the very presence of his very self in our lives. In the second reading, Revelation chapter 1, verses 9 to 11a, and then 12 to 13, and then also 17 to 19, this reading begins, I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Christ. As Jesus suffered physical violence, so did many of his followers. Persecution for their faith caused them great distress. However, Jesus always accompanied them, giving a sense that already they were a part of his kingdom. He gave them the strength to endure through it all, gives us that same strength in our times 
of temptations and difficulties. Jesus says of himself, Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. We ask him to protect us by keeping the doors of that world locked for us, but rather open the doors to life forever in heaven. May God be praised as we seek him each day.